In this video I'll be doing a review of Ubuntu GNOME, and not the Ubuntu, which most people probably would have expected me to do. No, this is a new release from Canonical. So, Ubuntu GNOME. I'm sure I've seen one of these distros before, Ubuntu GNOME Remix or something. But anyway, this is a new one. And I was immediately drawn to this little issue down here. The install alongside option does not work. Okay, that's not a very good start for a new distro. And indeed, trying it out in VirtualBox, uh, the install alongside option does not work. It has frozen in place. So we'll just have to uh, send the shutdown signal and hopefully that one will shut down on its own. Yes, yes it does. So if you're trying out this distro, you're going to have to um, yeah, do it as a single boot only and then try and dual boot something else with it. So I'm booting up the distro now. I've opted to review the GNOME 3.8 version rather than the 3.6 which it comes with. There's instructions on the website about how you install the 3.8 PPA. It's not that difficult. Uh, there's a few extra features from it. Hey, you can easily view one here. You've got a right-click option back again. So you can get to settings or the change desktop. And already I'm finding the distro does not flow particularly well. Do I click background? Oh, no, wait, that's not where you go to change the wallpaper. You actually have to click on the picture. Okay, uh, well, we can see there's a few selections of wallpapers pre-installed. Very nice, very nice, very nice. You might get the idea that some of my comments are going to be about how the distro flows. Well, yeah, okay, so I'll just press the Windows key to bring up the Activities menu. So if I want to start typing an application I would like to find, um, let's say I want... Not... Come on, typing something, why aren't you doing it? Oh, right, you actually got to go and click on the search button. Okay, well, now, now do something. But now it doesn't want to do anything, because I've started typing. Okay, let's come out of Activities, we'll go back in. So, Activities, click on the search. Ah, now we want to search, do we? Yes. Okay, so I have opened up Nautilus, and already you can see the theming is horrible for the icons. They're just an ugly colour, aren't they? Can I open up a video? Will it play anything? Yes, it does. That's alright. Uh, can we play some music? Yep, yeah, come on. Yep, yeah, okay, that works as well. Speed seems to be a bit of an issue there. It's not the most responsive distro. But I really do have issues with this new version of Nautilus. Well, most of the options are missing there on the right click menu. And the menus for the application seem to be all over the place. You've got a menu there. Okay, now where's the menu at the top? Oh no, right, we've got right click on files at the top there to get the rest of the menus. So that would bring up the options of like connect to server. Wow, that's obvious being right up there, isn't it? But then if I open another application, oh there we are, I've got Firefox, oh no wait, that's not fair, let's not do Firefox, because that's not a GNOME application, is it? Uh, let's actually go for Eye, Eye of GNOME Image Viewer. Well, the menu's there on that application, and not only that, do you notice they're completely different themes on the applications, aren't they? Oh, why do we have no minimise button? Arr. Right, so Eye of GNOME has a dark background. Nautilus has light background. That menu there is light. The menu on here is dark. That's the Ubuntu theming there. And the menus up here are black. Ugh, make up your mind! Use one colour and stick with it! Going back to the activities menu, bringing up the application searcher, you can see it's a bit different now with uh, where the folders of applications are. So we've got a couple of folders here. Sundry and Utilities. But where are the rest of the folders? Isn't there something missing here? And there are games on here? Or there are um, accessories? Does it work like typing games? Game works? I, I, I just don't know where to go searching for all my applications. <laughs> it's weird. The lock screen was a bit strange. They seem to have followed the idea of Windows 8 for this one. Or was it Windows 8 follow GNOME? Yeah, I'm not sure which one it is on that one. Probably the latter, actually. Anyway, taking a look at the applications we have installed. And do you know what? For the first time, I'm actually baffled about how I can range all this. Uh, I, I don't know, because I'd normally split it off into, like, accessories, games, office... So I'm just going to have to mention sort of notable applications. 
for the web browser, we've got Firefox. For the Office application, we've got LibreOffice. In fact, that's the full suite of LibreOffice. We've got Base installed. We've got a couple of games on there. It's just the basic games. We've got like a Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, and Sudoku. We've got Rhythmbox for your audio player. Shotwell for photo managing. We've got the Ubuntu Software Center for installing the applications. And really, is that about all I can mention? Oh, incidentally, Sound Recorder doesn't work properly. There's your tweak tool for GNOME, of which I was able to use the shell extensions and install a weather applet. There is a way of getting the applications to have a dark theme, but that ends up with a dark background and dark menus. So yeah, if your theming gets becomes consistent, but I don't necessarily want dark backgrounds for all the applications. But here's what I thought of, Ubuntu GNOME 1304. Oh, do I have to do this part? Look, you're probably thinking I'm just some Unity lover who's just spent the whole five minutes ranting and raving about how bad GNOME is and will no never accept it as a desktop. No, I really did want to give it a shot and try and present all the positives about it. But no, GNOME just spat in my face. So, easy to use. No, it does not flow well with the desktop. You're going to end up burning a hole in your mouse map. The amount you're going to have to move that mouse around the screen to try and find all the, all the various menus that are located and to use the application searcher. So ease of installation, no, there is that known issue with the install alongside option. However, if you're just doing a single boot option, it's perfectly fine. It's easy enough to install there. The so styling, it is inconsistent throughout the applications and the menus. Boot up speed, is around about average. I've got around 14 seconds in the virtual machine. Responsiveness, fairly good. Number of bugs, got previously mentioned issue with the installer. Got the keyboard input didn't seem to pick up properly on the searcher. Although that's probably me just being a numpty. But if me being a numpty caused that bug, then, you know. And also the sound recorder didn't work. Right, selection of pre-installed applications. Yeah, I think mean, that's pretty reasonable. But there's not all the codecs are pre-installed. Number of applications available. I've said the same thing again and again for all the Ubuntu distros. So we'll ignore that. And the good points. Again, the same, said the same sort of thing there with the UEFI BIOS. The bad points. Too many useful features have been removed from the GNOME applications, and you've only got a support time of 9 months. So overall, I have given this distro a very poor number there of 60%. Thanks for watching. I know what haters are going to say. I'll see you all later.